Hello everyone and welcome to today's po podcast which features Georgia Vine exploring and um, discussing her virtual placement and her journey into occupational therapy. So today I'd like to um, say hello to Georgia Vine. Hi Georgia. Hi. And we're just going to talk through and have um, some discussions about Georgia's experiences from joining the um, occupational therapy and her journey on the um, course. Okay, Georgia, let's start with the information. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how you came to be on the occupational therapy course. A little bit about me is that I am a third year BSc occupational therapy student at Sheffield Hallam University. I have cerebral palsy, which affects all four limbs and my speech. This being the short explanation, of course, due to my CPR, I have had occupational therapy input from being born up until the age of 16 to help me with my fine and gross motor skills, as well as providing me with equipment to be independent. Some of my equipment, for example, my deceum and my plate guard I still use on a daily basis to enable me to be more independent. My most recent input of OT was a driving assessment I had in 2017 as I drive a heavily adapted vehicle. Yeah. Brilliant. That's really interesting. So just tell me a little bit about why you chose occupational therapy as a career rather than any other career that you could have the option of, of choosing? I wanted to study occupational therapy because my own OTs played such a significant role in my life. I've always been interested in the profession from a young age due to how varied it was. I always took in what my OTs didn't. I remember being in awe of the skill set they had to be able to help me to gain independence whilst considering all aspects of my life. I knew that I wanted to go into a nurturing job and I've always wanted to help others. However, I also loved maths and I didn't want to leave my love for problem solving behind and that's why OT felt the perfect role for me. I did have doubts about getting into university because of my needs and this did cause a few anxieties but you don't know unless you try and I'm so happy that I went for it because I love this profession. Yeah. Me too. Great profession for us all to be and especially on OT Week, it's really good to promote the profession and its access and inclusivity. So a lot of people might be aware of you through your blogs, Georgia, with your um, uh, with CPT with CP teens. I'm just wondering how you originally got into blogging. I got into blogging because I wanted to raise awareness of my disability and give people more insight. I wanted to do this to make people aware that just because I have a disability doesn't mean that I can't live an ordinary life and that I can achieve. But then on the other hand, I wanted to make people aware that what you see, it's not what you get with a disability because my needs are a lot more complex than they first seem. I started my own blog in 2019 because I'd previously done a few guest blogs and I really enjoyed it and I was receiving positive feedback from my work so I felt like it was the right time to go solo. Yeah. Yeah, and you've done a, a, another few a blogs this year, guest blogs for um, Look Here Australia and you've been involved in, in research for um, postural groups. So your name is getting out there, Georgia. So moving on to occupational therapy. So you were blogging originally. So what and how did you think about incorporating um, occupational therapy into your blogging? 
When I started my blog, although I wanted to discuss occupational therapy, I found it quite hard to incorporate it into my writing as I didn't know which direction I wanted my blog to go in. I also found it difficult because at the time I started my blog I was in my first year of my studies therefore I didn't feel like I knew enough about the profession to link it in. I only started doing this because on my first placement Margaret was my halfway visiting tutor and she suggested that I should link this in with a T more. Then we got talking about the impact of the online community and how it's been a great tool for me and helped me to promote my confidence. This was because at the time my friend had just done a report with the BBC about the benefits of social media for disabled people so we was discussing this and how important online communities are for disabled people and I just said that I wished. This was valued more in the OT world, and this is when my virtual placement was born and where I found out how I could link blog in the OT. Now I promote the use of online communities in the OT world with help from Margaret and friends that I've met through this powerful online community and it's great. It's difficult as not everyone understands what I do and why I do it but the power of online communities are being recognized more which makes me so happy and so much more motivated to continue to do what I do. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. I think we, we started talking last, I don't know, at the halfway visit in 2019 and I don't think we've stopped since. No. And we've done a lot, had a, a, an excellent journey together, I think, through yeah. all this. And starting the um, starting the virtual placement planning before even the COVID hit, I think has given us an extra dimension because we'd already put all the foundations in place yeah. for that virtual placement. And and literally we know that the virtual placement would just be the starting point. Not there. Yeah. And, and we've and we've been able to connect with so many people, not just nationally but internationally. And that and that's been the power of being virtual and being online, isn't it? Yeah. And okay, so we've done that placement, and you're in your final year of the occupational therapy course at Sheffield Hallam. Just thinking about that and taking stock now and, and looking forward, just tell me a bit about your future plans and your um, ambitions within occupational therapy. Thank you. I hope to qualify and become a paediatric occupational therapist. I want to work in paediatrics because I had my first placement there and I just loved it so much. But I also want to work there because it gives me chance to use my disability and past experiences as tools to enable me to enhance my personal and professional development. Yeah. Um, I is there anything want else? to continue blogging and continue to raise awareness of online communities. I would like to do more research project mapping with certain groups and online activities to find out more about them. I would love for people to connect with me and tell me how they are connecting with people online, for example, through work or charities. I have a lot of ideas of what I'd like to achieve in the future in terms of making my blog more of a substantial part of my career, but I guess we have just got to see where I end up. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's really important. I think we'd highlight for anyone listening to this, if anyone is working online and using um, online communities, to contact Georgia and let them know what they're doing and how they're doing it and how the foundations of occupational therapy are enabling them to deliver that, um, that intervention online. And then we can synthesise all the information and, and make that into a, a, another blog for different areas. And we're always happy to do a guest blog for uh, anyone if they want to get in contact with Georgia. Is there anything else you would want to add, Georgia, in the OT Week blog? I do. 
What are we say I'm going to do a bug on, on Friday and I'm going to break it on my view and take the, the video and, and break it on my path. But I just can't believe it like that, you know. My bug was, no one really knew about it and I didn't really know, I didn't really know myself what I wanted to do with it. And, and you just like completely went in there. So, for my help from you, well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a great journey together, and uh, we're both hoping that this is the start of a, a long journey and a, a great friendship. We've got yeah. to know each other really well over the last 18 months, and I'm sure that's going to grow and develop as we go into the future when um, Georgia qualifies. Yeah. So, thank you for listening to um, Georgia Vine blog. Please get in contact if you have any questions or queries or you've got some information about any online communities that we could um, look into or that you could explain what you're doing and how you're doing it online. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Bye.